Good morning, everyone. Welcome this morning to South Parkersburg United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you're worshiping with us this morning. Thanks for those that are here in the sanctuary with us. What a beautiful crowd we have this morning. We do for those in the sanctuary and for those watching online, we have uh, new cameras and we have new software that, uh, that is allowing us to live stream um, in, in HDMI, so it's higher def, so uh, you, can, you can probably, if they zoom in, which they can't right today, but if they zoom in, you'll probably see my gray hairs, and when, when those uh, see the pastor, he has aged, yes. Uh, so uh, so the, old cameras, the old cameras were a little fuzzy, uh, but this new technology, it's great. The software being used is fantastic. It's much easier than the method we were using. Not to spend a lot of time on this, but um, for those in the sanctuary, we are having technical difficulty right now with the TVs, so if they flicker on and off, um, don't, don't make a big deal about it. Um, hopefully they come back on, but, uh, but it does not impact the live stream, so um, pay no attention to the flickering TVs, okay? Uh, we're working on getting that fixed, but we do want to welcome everybody to our service this morning. Again, we are so glad that you are here on this Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to all of you. And happy Valentine's Day to my lovely wife, who uh, is behind me, but uh, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. We are so glad that you're here worshiping with us this morning. We do have birthdays this week. And today, actually, is Bob Hoffman's 90th birthday. So happy birthday to Bob Hoffman, 90 years old. So happy birthday to him. Also later in the week, uh, Nick Reed celebrates a birthday. Catherine Moyer celebrates a birthday. Larry Sexauer and Mel Wormter all celebrating birthdays this week. So happy birthday to all of those. Want to remind everyone of uh, the opportunities to continue to tithe during this uh, during this time when we're um, remote and also in person. For those that are in the sanctuary, we of course have the baskets in the back that you can drop off your tithes and your offerings. But for those that are still watching on, at home, uh, you can always mail your tithes and offerings into my home address at Brad Lewis, 2050 Larkmead Road, Parkersburg, West Virginia, 26101. Again, you can mail those in. Uh, also, Silver Plate this month being February is the uh, Women's Care Center and... Uh, and so if you just mark your tithes that it goes to the second mile, we'll make sure it goes there as well. All right. We're going to sing a song right now. No, we're actually going to have an acolyte right now. So our acolyte is coming forward. We will welcome the light of Christ. Thank you, Austin. All right. Before we um, get into the actual song itself, um, we're going to kind of learn it because it's, it's a Gaither song. It's probably some that you're very familiar with, but, uh, but it's called I Am Loved. And on Valentine's Day, we thought this would be appropriate for I Am Loved. So uh, if Jim Braden will put the words up and keep the, keep the uh, <coughs> hopefully the TV stay on, but it's real simple. I am loved, I am loved. So it's not, a, it's not a hard song to learn. It's not a lot of words, but, uh, but we'll sing it through one time, and then, uh, and then we'll actually do our choruses, okay? So, I am loved, I am loved. I can risk loving you for the one who knows me best, loves me most. I am loved, you are loved, won't you please take my hand? We are free to love each other, we are loved. All right, simple enough, and then we go into you are loved. So same tune, but then we go into you are loved. 
So if you'll, uh, Jim, go back to that first one, and then we'll just do these choruses, all right? And if the words disappear, just watch me, okay? I am loved, I am loved, I can risk loving you. For the one who knows me best, loves me most. I am loved, you are loved, won't you please take my hand? We are free to love each other, we are loved. You are loved, you are loved, you can risk loving too. For the one who knows you best, loves you most. I am loved, we are loved, won't you please take our hand? We are free to love each other, we are loved. Going together, enjoying the trip, Getting used to the family I'll spend eternity with. Learning to love you, how easy it is. Getting used to the family of God. Reaching our hands to a brother who's new learning to say that i really love you learning to walk as the master would do getting used to the family of god getting used to the family of God. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. I'll take an opportunity to wish my lovely wife happy Valentine's Day. She's back there at the back, was making a list of everyone that coming in. It's good to see folks in the, in the sanctuary. Many of you have on your red for Valentine's Day. We appreciate that. And we welcome you as well if you are watching us uh, online this morning, uh, whether you'll be watching the recording on Facebook. And also we uh, will be able to upload our uh, services to YouTube. Uh, so that you'll be getting some more information about that as well. So uh, you, we eventually would be able to watch it on our Facebook uh, page, as well as our website, uh, southparkersburgumc.org, as well as a YouTube page. So uh, we're just uh, branching out in all different directions, and that's great. Uh, but again, we, we welcome you today uh, to our service of worship this uh, February the 14th, St. Valentine's Day, and we're just excited to be here. Uh, this coming Wednesday uh, is going to be the um, Ash Wednesday, February the 17th, as we begin the season of Lent. And so uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing during Lent is we're going to be offering a, uh, a daily devotional time. And so we have some books available. Um, it's called It Is Finished, uh, The Last Words of Christ. It's for Lent. Uh, those of you who have been following us on Wednesday evenings uh, know about this. We talked about it this past Wednesday. Uh, this is going to be, we're going to be starting out with a virtual Ash Wednesday service this Wednesday night at 630. And so we invite you to uh, be a part of that. Uh, and if you are interested in getting one of the books, uh, you may see Jennifer at the end of the service. We have some books available. If we need more, we will order more. But uh, just wanted to uh, offer that to you this morning. I know some of you already have books for that, and we just uh, invite you to take part in that as well. Um, this coming week, uh, the weather looks pretty bad, so I hope you're ready. Uh, some places have had some uh, ice storms. There's many parts of uh, West Virginia, Kentucky that have been without power for several days. Uh, we want to lift them up in prayer um, as well as uh, remember those folks that are uh, displaced from their homes that are uh, trying to get power restored as well. Um, 
we have uh, know some family down in the Atlanta area that that's what they do is uh, go out and try to repair power when it's off. And so they go out for, for sometimes days and weeks at a time. So uh, keep those folks in your prayers. Um, but again, uh, we are expecting some, some, uh, some winter weather this week, maybe some more snow and, and possibly ice and some cold, uh, bitter cold. I call it scary cold when it gets down below about 10 degrees. Uh, they're saying we may get some, some single digits this coming week. And uh, so keep that in mind as you plan for this week. If, uh, if the weather is bad, try to stay in, stay warm, um, and uh, just, just take care of yourselves. Um, did want to uh, lift up, we did get a, a, a message from Kay Hoffman. She wanted to thank us, uh, our congregation, as well as the others who sent uh, cards for uh, Bob's 90th birthday, as Brad mentioned. Today is Bob Hoffman's 90th birthday. I know many of you sent cards. Uh, he really appreciated them. Uh, whenever this uh, call was made, they had, he had received 48 cards, but I'm sure that there are probably more than in the mail. Uh, that he will receive. So th thank you to those who uh, sent cards to Bob Hoffman. We will continue to keep him in our prayers uh, as well as others that will be celebrating birthdays this coming week. Um, some other prayer requests that I needed to lift up this morning. Uh, Pat Tucker asked if we would put her aunt uh, Mary Stallman on our prayer list, so please keep Mary in your prayers. Uh, Brees Chaddock's cousin will be having heart surgery uh, in March. His name is Jackson Myers, so please keep Jackson Myers in your prayers. We'll continue to lift up Evie Epler as she recovers from her surgery. Dale Palmer recovering from surgery. We'll keep him in our prayers. Melissa Cool is still recovering from her surgery. We want to continue to keep her in our prayers. Al Stump is recovering from an illness. We can need to continue to keep Al in our prayers. Uh, Gary Nichols, that's uh, father of Terry Nichols is in need of prayer as well. And uh, Michelle Linger, uh, we want to keep her in our prayers. That's uh, Jan Barnes' stepdaughter, so we keep her in our prayers as well. Uh, there are many others that are on our prayer list that you uh, can look at. It's on our, our uh, church website, southparkersburgumc.org. It has a complete list of those that we need to keep in prayer, as well as families that have lost loved ones. There's a couple that I wanted to lift up this morning. Uh, Thurman Bibby, that is uh, the grandfather of Amanda Bibby. We uh, need to keep that family in our prayers. And Karen Perkins, uh, that's the aunt of Amanda Kelsey, uh, passed away recently. So we want to keep them in our prayers as well. You may have others, some unspoken prayer requests that we need to lift up this morning. God hears those prayers. And let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning and lift up those that we know. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity, this uh, St. Valentine's Day as we come together uh, remembering your love for us and that you loved us so that we can love others. We lift up those uh, names, Lord, the, the prayer requests not only of our lips but of our hearts, Heavenly Father. Uh, you know the, the needs of those. There are many that we know of that are recovering from surgery, recovering from illness, and we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to be with them in powerful and healing ways. Be with those families that have lost loved ones. Lord, just continue to pour out your comfort and mercy upon them. Lift, uh, we lift us uh, ourselves up, Heavenly Father, that you would open our hearts and minds this day as we worship together to receive your grace and to learn more about you and about your love for us. We thank you, Lord, for those who are here and those who are watching. Uh, we are not able to be completely together uh, physically, but we are together spiritually as we worship together. And, Lord, we are thankful for that. We just lift up those, Heavenly Father, that we know that uh, are still in need of your healing touch. And we know that you hear our prayers because we know that you loved us enough to send your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior. You call us to, uh, to learn more about you and your love as you call us to be your disciples. And so, Lord, as your disciples, we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Again, this is St. 
Valentine's Day this morning. It is also Transfiguration Sunday. This is the final Sunday in the season after Epiphany uh, that we started uh, several weeks ago, shortly after Christmas. And uh, this is the last Sunday of that as we will be moving into the season of Lent uh, beginning on Wednesday night with, uh, with Ash Wednesday. And so our scripture passage for us uh, this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, uh, the ninth chapter beginning with the first verse. And these verses come immediately following a time when Jesus was uh, trying to explain to his disciples that he would be, uh, when they got to Jerusalem, that he would be turned over to uh, the authorities and uh, would be, uh, be punished and, and taken to trial and eventually crucified. And so we, we pick this up sort of in the, in the middle of that, uh, of that conversation that he's having with his disciples as we begin with the first verse of chapter 9. It says, And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were standing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Transfiguration Sunday. A day when we remember once again that Jesus took his disciples, took three of his disciples up on the mountaintop where he was transfigured in front of them. Mountaintop experiences. We've all had them, haven't we? We know what it's like to go up on the mountain. Growing up, I would go to a place uh, for summer camp called Bluestone, having been raised in the Presbyterian church. That was sort of the equivalent to Spring Heights in the, in the Methodist church a place where I would go and, and experience God in new ways. And it was nice to be up on the mountaintop, as it often is. Things are different up there. But then we can't stay up there, though, can we? We come back down, and so Jesus took a couple of his disciples up on the mountaintop. And there he was transfigured, it says. He, his clothes, it says, began to glow, to shine like no one on earth would have been able to to get them, to bleach them, to make them that white. Well, it wasn't really his clothes that were glowing, was it? It was Jesus himself. It was Jesus in the presence of God. Jesus was glowing, a glo the glory of God, being clothed in the glory of God. You know, there's, there's other examples of this glowing of humans in the presence of God. In the book of Genesis, when God created Adam and Eve, they, they had this glow, this glory of God that they were clothed with. And it wasn't until they sinned that that glow began to fade. And that's when they realized that they were without clothing. You see, until then, they were clothed in that glory of God because they lived in the presence of God. God came and walked with them in the Garden of Eden. And that's how God created man, to have this, this glow, to be clothed in that glory of God. Moses himself experienced that when he went up on the mountaintop. In the presence of God, it says that his face shone when he came down from the mountaintop. In fact, when he came down, it scared the Israelites to where they said, Oh, put a veil over that. We don't want to see that. That scares us because you were glowing you had a shine because you had been in the presence of God. But what that tells me is that when Jesus was there on the mountaintop, because of his humanity being in the presence of God, he began to shine. He was clothed in the glory of God. And that tells me that that's the promise that we have. 
That's the promise that we have that when we leave this place, when we go to heaven to be in the presence of God, we will be clothed in the glory of God. That's one of the promises that we have, the promise of being clothed in that glory, that we, like God, like like Jesus there on the mountaintop, will be transfigured, will be transformed, will be changed, and be clothed in the glory of God. What a promise that is for us. Something that we have to look forward to as brothers and sisters in Christ, as those who will experience the promises that God makes, and the one also to be clothed in the glory of God. You know, as, again, this is Valentine's Day also, and one of, one of the things that I remember about Valentine's Day when I was growing up was in grade school, do you remember when you would exchange Valentine's with everyone in your class? Well, I had to with everyone. I don't know whether everybody gave everybody else in the class valentines, but my mom told me, you'll give everybody a valentine in class. And so I remember, you know, these these little card valentines, you know, just simple little things. But but I I would spend hours agonizing over which one to give who in the class. You know, I had, you know, like like all of us, we had we had our close friends. Uh, you know, I had, had the guy friends that I hung around with and, and played with on the playground. And, and then there were probably some other guys in there that I, I wasn't as close to and didn't know as well. And then, of course, then there were the girls. Oh, yeah, there were girls. And then, and then there were some of the girls that, that you know, I, I, I liked, but they didn't know it because I couldn't tell them. And then there were other girls, you know, as well. And so I would agonize hours spending, you know, because some of the Valentines had they had things like love on it. And you had to be careful who you who you gave those to, you know. So I remember just spending hours agonizing over which Valentines to give to which classmates in, in my classes. Well, you know, as I as I thought about that. What have you given to God? You know, God wants to hear from you as well. God God is love. The the scriptures tell us that God is love. And and we think about that as, well, well, love is a relationship, but God is relationship. You see, God is three persons in one. God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so God is that relationship of, of love and respect. That's how God is love. And God invites us into that relationship. That's one of the, I think, the coolest things about about the invitation that God makes to us. To invite us into that relationship that is love. That is God. He loved us so that we can love others. He loved us first so that we can love Him. Love Him with all that we are. And so He invites us into that relationship and then wants us to love others. And so as you think about, you know, what kind of a valentine would you give God? You know, would you give God one that says, oh, thank you for creating me. Thank you for for being there. Thank you for for loving me. Or would you give him one that says, God, I love you with all that I am. I love you with my, my, my heart, mind, soul, strength, everything that I am. I give to you because that's that's really what he expects in return for his love for us. And so, so Valentine's Day is, is a time when we think about exchanging Valentines with, with each other, but think about exchanging your heart with God, kind of, a, kind of a, a heart exchange. When you came in, you had hearts on your seats there that, to remind you that, that you are loved. You know, we are loved by God. God loved us enough that he sent his son. This, this whole story about God and and about Jesus that Jesus came to show God's love for us that God loved us not just us not just humanity but loved the world all of creation enough that he gave his son Jesus Christ who, who died on the cross to give us the promise of eternal life what love that is and how can we respond to that love By giving God our hearts, by giving him our lives, by giving him our love and loving him. There's one other important part of this story of the transfiguration that that I think we need to hear this morning. 
And that is that when the voice from heaven came, and of course this voice from heaven that came at the transfiguration, that says, this is my son, the beloved, that kind of reminds us of the baptism of Jesus. When he was baptized by John in the river Jordan, and the voice from heaven came, this is my son of whom I am well pleased. You know, there's some question about whether that voice from God at the baptism was heard by others and, or just by Jesus. But in this case, at the transfiguration, this message is, is given for all to hear, especially for his disciples to hear because it says, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Listen to him. You know, in the world today, there are so many things to listen to. There are so many voices out there trying to tell us what to do, what to believe, how to act. So many voices, so many ways that we are hearing those voices. But the question I have is, are you listening to Jesus? Because the instructions that God gave the disciples at that transfiguration and that God gives to us and continues to give to us is listen to Jesus. Listen to the words of Jesus. Listen to the commands of Jesus. Listen to the instructions of Jesus. And one of those main instructions, one of those new commandments that he gave was to love one another. To love each other to love our enemies, and to show love. To show love through all of our actions, through all of our, our deeds, through everything that we are and everything that we do, to show love. Are we listening to Jesus? I pray that you are listening for the voice of Jesus in the world today. And, and you won't hear too much of the, of the voice of Jesus and the instructions in parts of the world, but you'll hear it through the Scriptures, You'll hear it through studying the scriptures and the word of God. You'll hear the voice of, of Jesus. And I pray that you are listening to Jesus and listening to the commandments that he gives and listening to the instructions that he is giving you. You know, one of the things that we often do at, at, during the season of Lent is to give up something. People often ask me, what should I give up for, for Lent? What should I give up? A lot of people give up things that they really like, like chocolate or Mexican food or different things like that. But one of the things that I often encourage people to do is to give up things that are interfering with your relationship with God or your relationship with other people. Give up things that are getting in the way of showing love to others and showing love to God. Those are the things that I think we need to give up in our lives. Maybe not just during Lent, but maybe forever. Living our lives in a different way. And what a better time to start that than during Lent. This Ash Wednesday, we will be beginning the season of Lent. We will be looking at ourselves. It's a time of, of self-searching for those things in our lives that we really could do without and spending more time doing the things that God wants us to do. Showing love to God, listening to the voice of Jesus, and loving and reaching out to others in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we are thankful for the message this morning to remind us that you are love. And that you invite us into that relationship of love. And what you ask in return is our love for you and our love for others. Gracious God, we are thankful for the invitation to be a part of your love. Pour out your Holy Spirit, pour out your grace and mercy upon us as we seek to live lives that are pleasing to you and show love for others and the love of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn today is, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. Wouldn't it have been a, an amazing time to be on that mountaintop and experiencing that transfiguration? I'll turn it back over to Brad as he'll lead us in our closing hymn, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. I 
I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me for me it was in the garden he prayed not my will but thine he had no tears for his own griefs but sweat drops of blood for mine how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me in pity angels beheld him and came from the world of light to comfort him in the sorrows he bore for my soul that night how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me he took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory his face I at last shall see, twill be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Love that song. Love that, the, that last verse. When with the ransomed in glory, his face I at last shall see, t'will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are truly thankful for your love. We are so thankful that you loved us so that we can love others in your name. Continue to pour out your grace upon us to change us from the sinners that we were to the redeemed, forgiven sinners that you call us to be. We are thankful for the promise of your glory, to be clothed in your glory and your presence for eternity. Pour out your grace, your blessings upon us now as we go out to share the love, to show the love of Christ in the world around us. We are love. And let us show that love to others in Jesus' name. This we ask. Amen. We thank you for worshiping with us this morning. For those that are watching online, we welcome you and are glad that you chose to spend time with us as well. May God continue to pour out his blessings and grace upon you that we may be a blessing to others in Jesus' name. God bless.